Today we had some cattle bought out of Clovis, New Mexico, and they are en route to us here at the feedlot, but they had a little accident and Adrian at a guy's place and ran over a uh, tree stump. So we're just kind of hanging tight and waiting until they get here so we can get them unloaded. Yeah, once they get here, we'll get them unloaded and put them in the pens and then keep them on hay and water and a little feed. And, and then in a day or two, we'll get them worked and processed and, and get ready to turn them out on some grass. We've been processing a pen of cattle this morning, and the question's been asked somewhat over the years about why we do what we do with different sets of cattle. Uh, I personally, we've processed a lot of cattle over the years for different outfits, and basically what that means is we uh, they're basically getting a, a bill of health, kind of a physical, give them a once-over. We run them through a shoot, identification of some kind on them, normally a brand, sometimes, and maybe in conjunction with an ear tag. Usually the ear tags are infused with some kind of insecticides, keep the pests away from the livestock, keep them healthy just for their general well-being. They're poured with another uh, substance that keeps the internal parasites away, worms and so forth and things like that. And then we'll knock the horns off so they don't hurt each other, vaccinate them, antibiotics, uh, different diseases that may be prevalent in a particular part of the region. Obviously our medication right here in the Texas Panhandle may be different from Wyoming or even the eastern seaboard or the western coast, whatever it is, but we doctor for specific things here. And all of those things are a process for which the animal can go to grass or wheat or whatever sustenance they're gonna be turned out on to give them the best opportunity. A couple of things, the, the, the two main reasons we do this is for the number one, for the, the well-being of the livestock, but number two for I guess three things. Number two, for profitability for the producer. The guy that's invested in this livestock, leased or owns the land that they're going to graze. And then thirdly, to, to market a great end product uh, to ultimately the consumer. And in our mind, that, that consists really of the American housewife. Because if she's not happy with the product, I'm telling you, we're not selling it. So all of that being said, it's something that, that needs to be known through the land is that uh, the people taking care of this livestock out here really do this passionately. Uh, we do it for a living, but we do it because we care about uh, our part of the world and, and how and our lifestyle and that and that sort of thing. At the end of the day, I would tell you that uh, steak fingers are just as good as chicken strips. So, eat more beef. <laughs> So the question I would answer, I had people ask me on native cattle, why we don't work baby calves, maybe the same as we do some of these cattle that are shipped in from around the country. And the reason for that is those calves are born at their home. And so they're not exposed to, they haven't been shipped for, for hundreds or thousands of miles even. So they've been milking on their mother, everything they need they got from mama right there. So we ID them, make sure they're healthy. And the guy that buys them from me does all this. So again, Keep the chicken strips at the Happy Meal. Eat more steak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 h